Hi, I'm Paul Robichaud, a senior contributing editor with Windows IT Pro Magazine. Today, we're going to be talking about e-discovery in Exchange 2010. It's a really fertile topic. There's a lot to talk about. And there are a lot of misunderstandings out in the community about what e-discovery is, who needs it, uh, basically why you care about it. With me today from Sherpa Software is Marta Ferencbach. And she and I are going to be talking. Welcome, Marta. Thank you. She and I are going to be talking about some of the e-discovery features in Exchange 2010 how we got the features that we have, what you can and can't do with them, and most importantly, what these features mean in the broader context of the market. With all the hubbub and excitement around cloud-based services like Office 365, it's interesting to look at how the requirements for e-discovery have changed and are going to change into the future to support deployments where not all of your email boxes are necessarily going to be under your direct control. So to get started, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about what e-discovery is and why we have to have it. Most of the time when people hear the word e-discovery, the first thing they think of is lawyers. And that's normal because, not to be impolite about it, but this is all the fault of lawyers. <laughs> discovery is a legal term that essentially means that you are turning over records about your organization or about your business operations pursuant to some kind of legal requirement. It could be a subpoena, it could be an administrative demand from an entity like the Securities and Exchange Commission or the Federal Aviation Administration. Uh, it could be part of a civil suit if someone's suing your organization for a wrongful dismissal or wrongful termination or any number of other you know, bad things that all involve lawyers. So the discovery process is really well understood in the legal community. There's a whole set of rituals, if you will, that go you know, that set forth what you can ask for and how you ask for it, and when you're on the receiving end of a discovery request, what you have to do to negotiate certain things as being out of scope. Well, for a long time, e-discovery was sort of unsettled, but in 2006, at the end of the year, the federal government, and it's funny because I almost said Microsoft released this, <laughs> which would be a neat trick, but the federal government, the federal court system, released an updated version of what we call the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, or FRCP. This is a playbook for people who are bringing suit in federal court. And it says, if you're bringing a civil action, here are the requirements, here are what you may do, here's what you may not do, here's what you must do, and here's what you must not do. For every aspect of trial procedure, ranging from how you address the judge in the courtroom to everything. A lot of it is very boring and very, you know, very detailed, not at all interesting to people who are not attorneys. But the e-discovery piece is pretty interesting because it sets out what electronic records are, um, what you must produce, what you can try to negotiate not producing, and basically it sets out everything that you need to know um, pursuant to e-discovery. So let's start off, Marta, by talking a little bit about FRCP and who it applies to. I mean, is there anybody that can, you know, are you allowed to say, well, I don't think this applies to me because I'm a small organization or I'm a nonprofit or I'm no, I mean the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure is for federal court, but it's also used as the template for a lot of the state um, rules of civil procedure. So if you're involved in litigation, you certainly have to follow the rules of either your state or federal depending on where your trial is being held. Um, so from that point of view, if you're in a lawsuit, party to a lawsuit that is on the civil side, you do have this obligation of electronic discovery. Um, there's several rules in there that, that, that spe specify for that. Um, but in addition to that, it's not just about um, the federal rules or being in a lawsuit. As you mentioned before, when you are asked to produce data from the, um, the government, be it state government, local government, um, if you're uh, under compliance regulations, even if you're doing um, internal investigations, something's happened within your organization, basic compliance, basic auditing, all this kind of falls under the umbrella of e-discovery, mm -hmm. although only a portion of it is actually regulated, which would be what you're, you're going to trial. And of course, most businesses can be um, a party to a lawsuit. And your application actually begins early. I mean, it doesn't begin when you, if you receive a subpoena, it doesn't begin when you um, are party to the lawsuit. It actually begins when you think when you suspect there might be a lawsuit. That's your obligation oh, that's begins. 